Even what's considered small editions is, you know, 5,000, 7,000, right. you know, whatever. Uh, there's only 200 of these worldwide, and we have most of them here. Oh, we did. Now they're, they're almost sold out. Um, so the point is 269.88 and five interest-free payments to help spread it out. All right, I'm going to turn this over to Craig because I know you've brought in a bunch of, of material, not only the names, but the, the important backgrounds and the significance right. of each of these. Yeah, and I actually did call my Russian translator earlier to help me in the pronunciation of these uh, pilots and the, the names of these planes. They are named after the plane, so you will be ordering based on the plane. The story here is, first of all, let's make it absolutely clear that this is a true Russian mechanical movement in this watch. The watch itself is built by the Volmax Company of Moscow, Russia. Tim and I have been there, an amazing plant, amazing watchmakers putting these watches together. This is the Aviator brand, which is one of their three brands. This is as true Russian as it gets. When you add on top of that, that this is a what, we're, what is uh, referred to as the Aviator Flying Ace Heritage Collection, this is a collection celebrating 100 years of Russian av aviation. You've got three watches that not only are focused on the planes that you see on the dial, those planes are actually the planes very associated with famous pilots of Russia that are celebrated with each individual watch. The one we're looking at here, this is the Antonov 25 or the ANT 25, and that's how you would order it. Um, this was flown by uh, a, a gentleman uh, uh, called Chakalov. I think I'm doing better today after talking to Andre. I, I wouldn't Chekalov, know, to be honest. Chekalov, Chekalov, Chekalov. <laughs> he was known for long distance flying. He set many, many world records in this plane for long distance flying. Flights up to 63 hours. Keep in mind, I'm talking about in 1936 and 1937. He is, his name there is at the bottom of the, um, uh, the name of the planes there, the name of the pilot is there. Everything on this is Cyrillic, too. There's not a stitch of English anywhere on here. I vouch for that. Um, this is as true Russian as it gets. The plane is also um, uh, emblazoned on the back of the watch. The dates you see there, that is not the dates that the plane flew. That is the dates of the lifespan of the pilot. Sadly enough, in this case, it was a very short life. Yeah. Many aviators, of course, during that time period didn't have very long lives because of the fact that aviation was extremely dangerous at that time, and these guys were taking great risks. This gentleman was named a hero of the Soviet Union on more than one occasion. Um, then there are two others. There is one that is, is uh, it has the, uh, the Lavoshkin um, uh, LA-5. Uh, that's the, the one, with the, one which is the green in the middle. Um, that was flown by a gentleman who was known as the Ace of Aces, Kozhedub. And he was known as the Ace of Aces because he had more um, enemy planes downed during World War II than any other pilot on either side, Axis or Allies. He was the most successful pilot in World War II. That is the plane that he flew, the Lavashkin LA-5. And again, that's how you'll see the name when you go to order it online or when you call in to, to order the watch. If you want the green one with the World War II uh, era plane, uh, named for Kozhedub, that is the one you want. Now, number three. This is my favorite story, actually, of the three. Um, oh, that's the Lavashkin still. That's the. Yeah, I just wanted to show you the, the yeah, back. The back. Be beautiful piece there. Incidentally, on this one, guys, there's no more than half a dozen left. So th there's no doubt that this one, this is the last time you're going right. to see and it. He, and the, um, there's a loom shot. Okay, the third one, which we'll, I'm sure we'll get to in a minute, I'll go ahead and tell you the story. Um, a, a pilot named uh, Nesterov. He was the first pilot to ever fly a loop. He believed that you could fly a loop in a plane. He was the first pilot to ever fly a loop. The plane you see on here, the Newport 4, which is again what you would order it by, um, is the plane that he did this loop in. Uh, when he first did the loop, uh, his superiors were so upset about it, they actually arrested him for putting uh, Soviet property in danger. But then when he became a, a hero to the public for having done the loop, mm -hmm. uh, they freed him and promoted him. He also was the first pilot to ever take down another plane in battle. How he did it? He flew his plane into the other pilot's plane. They did not have weaponry at that time on the planes. Now, that's part of the story I, I, I didn't realize. I mean, I, I, I knew that, that he had ransomed, but I didn't realize that was the absolute first. That was the absolute first time that any other enemy plane was ever taken down in battle. They did not have um, weapons on their planes. The sad story is that when he hit the guy, because he was so bound and determined to take down another plane, um, he actually fell as well. His plane was destroyed and he was killed during the attempt. So uh, attempt was successful.
So you, if you, you have three options here, they're all very similar in styling. So in a lot of ways, it may come down to what do you find the more interesting story here? You've got one pilot who was known for long distance flight. You've got another pilot who was known as the most successful pilot in uh, World War II, and the other who was the first to do a loop and killed himself taking down another plane. Okay, we're about to call the LA-5 sold out. I think technically it's like one or two, and then I'm, I'm not trying to push you in. Well, I don't have to. I mean, it's going to go. The one with the green is going to go. If you want the Newport 4, there's like 20 of them, and the ANT-25, I think there's a couple dozen, and, and that's it, guys. There's only 200 of these for the entire world, so heads up on that. If you want this, I need to hear from you guys right now. You can do it on our website or you can do it uh, obviously with a phone call. Personally, I recommend that the site is just faster right now. I gotta tell you, uh, Craig, I love, and I always have, the dial construction you guys have done on the Caspian Sea Monster. This yeah, is cool. Beautiful piece. Beautiful this is, by the way, piece. one of the few uh, Russian pieces, uh, historically, you're ever going to see in a quartz. Uh, yep. For whatever reason, they just don't do it. And, and so, you know, behold the irony. Whereas with almost any other incarnation or vein of watches, you, know, you think of the mechanical as being the, the unusual or the elite. Mm -hmm. In a Russian example, there are so few that ever use Quartz, because these guys are, are old school, and I, you know, as, as you point out, having spent some time in in Moscow with yourself, and we, we go see these guys, you know, we've watched the machine, the cases, and the parts, and and, and, right. and so on. They, they're really old school, and that's why, to me, it's part of the fun of of bringing these. Uh, to the American market, to American television, and, and talking about it. This, this is not something that just came about after, like, you know, when the wall came down. Oh, hey, we can make hey, watches let's make now. Some watches, uh, no. They've done this for over 80 years. Yeah, eight decades of and, uh, history. They do brilliant work. Backing Speaking of which, this piece at 229, if you do not yet own an Artica, you have to own one sooner or later. You're just, you don't have a complete collection until you do. Everybody and should have an Arctic. Such an, an illustration as well, I think, of the Russian red in, mm -hmm. the, in this Beautiful instance. illustration of the Russian red. For those of you who aren't familiar with Vostok Europe, which is the brand that builds this watch, Vostok Europe is based in Vilnius, Lithuania. All of the watches are designed and hand assembled there. Um, they use a number of movements now, but this one has the actual Vostok movement, which is built by the Vostok Watch Company of Chistable, Russia, the oldest and largest continuously operating Russian watch manufacturer. And they produce the 32 yes. joule movement in this watch, which is proprietary to Vostok Europe, cannot be used in any other watch um, brand in the world, including Vostok itself. This is the Arctica. Every one of Vostok Europe's watches has a story behind it. And they don't just build a watch and then slap a name on it. They start with the story first. So in this particular example, the Arctica, which is named for the first surface ship to have ever reached the North Pole, something that mariners of the Russian variety are extremely proud of. Um, Igor Zavosky, the managing director of Vostok Europe, would have gone to Kosta Merkin, his designer, and said, Kosta, 